check the weather app first thing this morning. Plenty of afternoon thunderstorms in July, which is why it's so hot now. You know, if only you hadn't put Dad so far away. That cost me a lot of uh... Hey, Ducky, what time's your train back to Taipei tomorrow? Uh, 8 or 9, maybe 8.30, before 10 anyway. So what time? Before 10. How am I supposed to give you a lift to the station and you won't tell me? No need, I can get there myself. Sure you won't miss your train? I won't. But if I do, I'll just get the next one. I'll get back to Taipei, no problem. Any news? Same old. You doing all right for cash? Yes. Let me know if you run out. I'm okay. Hey, Ducky Huang, the only reason I'm, I'm asking is Dad told me to look after you just before he died. He was worried. I'm an adult now. I'm an adult now. Oh, please. <laughs> How long has it been? Nine years since Dad passed, and you're still acting on commercials, playing the bubble teas, playing the bubbles in bubble tea, the beef and beef noodle soup. Don't you have a plan for your life? <laughs> I forgot. It has been nine years. Time flies. Who knew? So useless. <laughs> you only know how to eat. I am a greedy pig. You get that from <laughs> Dad. What'd you get him today? Fish stew. From where? The place on Bao An Road. Remember? When he'd pick us up after school, he'd go the long way around so we could stop there. Fongs? Yep. Didn't Fongs go downhill? Uh-uh. The French is different. It's run by Fong's son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's for Dad. Well, didn't you get extra? Well, aren't your eyes shut? Just a little nibble, Dad won't mind. The other day, I passed by Bao An Road and saw a new place, Caddy Corner to Fang's, called Ye Fang. Mm. So I stopped there. Do you see how dark this stew is from the fish belly oil? That's how you know, huh? It's perfect. This firm, the springy texture of the sailfish in the thick broth that luxuriously envelops the belly meat. <laughs> wow, Ducky, you're dissecting that corpse like a coroner. Yeah, I miss this taste. It's delicious, huh? Mm. I'm in sixth grade. I'm in seventh. Dad picks me up after school. Uncle Twin picks me up. We sit down to this meal. And every time Uncle Twin says, Hey, Ducky, let the flavors of skin, flesh, and fat explode on your tongue <laughs> each mouthful. And Dad teases, Well, Twin, you're dissecting that course like a coroner. I slurp the whole thing down to the bottom of the bowl. Just eat a little bit to settle your stomach. You can still have dinner later. And I tell Uncle Twin, I want, what do you want? To drink, Shang Chun black tea. <laughs> when you eat fish stew or sticky rice cakes, you need something to cut through the grease. So we turn down the alleyway for a cup of refreshing black tea. Oh, I wonder where who went first thing this morning. Yeah, I know what. Dad likes to drink this stuff. Have I told you this? About what? The day Dad passed. I took care of all the paperwork. As I left the hospital, I felt thirsty and had to get a cold drink. Turned the corner, and there was Uncle Twin. What are you doing here, Ducky? Uh, it's Dad. Oh, I see. I wonder why they moved him. It's far, all right. He didn't make it this time. He's been released from this world. Oh. Well, well it's, it's a good thing his suffering is over. Yeah, it's dragged on too long. Well. Well, you and your sister will have to care for each other now. Sure. I mean, she's been doing all the work. That's good. Well, your sister, she's more reliable than you. Hey, Uncle Twin. <laughs> all right, all right. Where are you going now? Uh, getting the bus back to Taipei. I have an audition tomorrow. Wow, our little ducky is becoming a big star. Uh, no, not really. It's to play the papaya in papaya milk. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's the lead role. Uncle Twin. <laughs> And so Uncle Twin gave me a lift to the bus station, and we parked outside Shuangquan to get some black tea. We didn't say anything for a long time. I'm sorry, Uncle Twin. It's all right. It's been so many years. It's okay, Fa. Fa treated me like family, and so did you and your sister. Last time I saw Uncle Twin. Well, I keep an eye on him on Facebook. You're still on Facebook? I thought it was just for old people. 
Oh, Ducky. <laughs> We're here. This is a mausoleum. Which floor is that on? How will you be able to find your way on your own? I'll just come every time with you. What if something happens to me? Uh, it won't. This way. Row 6, box 20A. What's that? Dumplings. How can that be? Uh. Someone's been here. <laughs> <laughs> That is Shatao Temple vegetable dumplings. Huh. <laughs> nice work, coroner. People think they're hard to get a hold of. I've never managed it. They go on sale at 5, 10 a.m., and the stall closes before 10. <gasps> Must be Twin. Must be Uncle Twin. Mm -hmm. He knows what Dad likes to eat. While we were still asleep, the two of them used to sneak out to Shatao Temple for vegetable dumplings. So Uncle Twin is still? After all this time, Uncle Twin still feels about Dad. It's been nine years. Can't let go. He posts on Facebook about making Dad's favorite dishes on Dad's birthday, then he brings them here. Which is a waste. He should invite me around instead. <laughs> Dad's gone. What else can he do? Yes, Dad's gone. Oh! Sis! What? That thing, Miss May! May? Don't we have gay marriage now? Oh, yes. Uh, I think I saw it on the so news. So does that mean... What are you saying, Ducky? A ghost marriage. Huh? A gay ghost marriage! <laughs> Are you crazy? Uncle Twin still feels so strongly for Dad, he can't stop thinking about him even after nine years. We couldn't do anything before, but now that it's legal, we can't hold back. You are crazy. Don't you think Uncle Twin deserves to marry the man he loves? And don't you know what place Uncle Twin holds in Dad's heart? I know, of course I know, but... But what? Just because we have gay marriage here doesn't mean it's the same over there. Yeah, you know, if we don't have gay marriage in the afterlife, what's the point? Right. Hmm. I really wanted them to get married. I know. What? We'll cast lots. Right. We can just ask Dad directly. Why didn't we think about that before? <laughs> you ask. Dad always said you were more reliable. Not truly. <laughs> Dad! It's Jen. <laughs> I'm here to see you with Ducky. We brought you your favorite fish stew. Not from the nasty tasting place. Oh. I got it from the good takeout place, Dad. And Ducky got your strong chin tea and the vegetable dumplings serve from Uncle. Fine. Anyway, we wanted to ask you, now that we can do it over here, where you are, <laughs> can man marry other and man? Give us a sacred lot for yes. Sacred lot. Sacred lot. That means yes? Right. This is amazing. <laughs> but how do we know if Dad wants of to? Of course he wants to. They were together so long. We should ask. Consent is important. <laughs> Fine. I'll ask. None of your nonsense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Dad, you see those shots on temple dumplings? I know they're your favorite, but you know how hard they are to get. You have to wake up early, earlier than I could ever Ducky. actually. Oh. <laughs> Uncle Twin went out first thing in the morning to get you those dumplings. You're the only person in his heart. Dad, do you want to marry Uncle Twin? Give us a sacred lot for yes. Smiling lot. Smiling lot. I guess uh, Dad must be happy. Ask again. Dad, uh, do you want to marry Uncle Twin? If you do, give me a sacred lot and we'll make it happen. Huh? Another smile to Hey, look how happy you are. Dad can't stop smiling. Mm -hmm. Move over. I'll ask. Dad, Ducky and I know you and Uncle Zun, how you and Uncle Zun feel about each other. We couldn't do anything about that before, but now we can. If you want to marry him, give us a sacred lot. Dad, you must be overjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, sis, he must have fallen over from laughing so hard and now he can't speak at all. He's so happy. I can't stop worrying. Worrying about what? That he'll be all alone over there. Now that he'll have Uncle Twin. <gasps> it's double seventh next week. Chinese Valentine's. We'll go visit Uncle Twin. What a great surprise for him. Black out. That yacht was black out. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Mm -hmm. This morning, 
morning, he posted on Facebook about heading home to cook the grocery he just bought. It smells so good. There must be Uncle Twins cooking, remember? He's a pro. No, he's just cooking for himself and it smells amazing. He's regular cooking, it's regularly amazing. Wow. Press the door though. It's double sorghum, he must be cooking for dad. Ding dong. Coming. You too, you've grown up. Doug H. Jen, and you're as beautiful as ever. You don't look a day older, Uncle Ben. I guess it's been nine years I've only seen Jen's baby on Facebook. Doug H., but why are you on Facebook? Uh, no way. Facebook is. Doug H! How, how have you been, <laughs> Uncle Ben? Not bad, not bad. What are you two doing here? We have something important to tell you, Uncle Ben. Right. Something important. <laughs> well, what kind of surprise do you have for me? Come in, come in. Uncle Twin, I wanted to tell you, we know everything. <laughs> what do you know? I, wh why are you two being so mysterious? <laughs> Uncle Twin, we came here for the sake of your happiness. <laughs> My happiness? Uncle Twin, we saw the vegetable dumplings. Vegetable dumplings? Ah. Right, I visited your dad on the ninth anniversary of his death, so I wanted to tell him what's happening. You were with dad for more than 20 years, but your relationship had to be secret. We were happy. I can still see your face at the hospital that day. I can't let go of it. That's all in the past. It's... So we thought we couldn't let all those regrets continue. So we thought of a plan, the best of both worlds. So you and dad can have a home. What are you talking about? I don't understand. We want to give you two a ghost marriage. <laughs> A ghost marriage? Relax, Uncle Twin. It's simple. We Googled it. We have everything we need here. Ancestral tablets. Incense. Paper clothes. Shirt. Trousers. Nuptial cough. Dumplings. Longevity noodles. See? Everything's perfect. <laughs> you too. You're always funny. We looked it up, Uncle Twin. You just need to line the incense. Hang on. Did you ask your dad? Of course he did. <laughs> what did he say? He laughed three times. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> You're a character, Fa. What do you mean, Uncle Glenn? Hang on. Yeah, I'm in the middle of cooking something. Let me turn off the flame. What are you cooking, Uncle Glenn? It smells so good. Uh, a pot pie and steak. Pot, pot pie? Steak? <laughs> I didn't know you could cook such Western. <laughs> Marco. Mm. These are Fa's daughters. Um, we're out of red wine. Would you mind going to the supermarket? <laughs> Uncle Twin. Who was that? <laughs> that, that, um, that's my new friend. New friend? What kind of new friend? <laughs> <laughs> I, How did you meet? <laughs> a few months ago. I downloaded that thing, you know, that new thing that people are using now, that app, the black and yellow one. That's <laughs> the green, green cheek. You know, anyway, that's how I met Marco. What kind of app are you talking about? Grinder. <laughs> Swipe right. Ducky, don't tell me you're on it too. I'm not. A friend showed me. Someone sent him a picture of an eight inches. Oh, uncle, don't go. Don't go for any old eight inches. I wouldn't, honestly. I don't think I can fit eight inches up Whoa. my head. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm a loner. You both know that. I didn't expect to be so lucky to meet someone again in my 50s. Imagine meeting a love of my life on, on Grindr. <laughs> but, but how much do you know about this Mr. Uh, Ma? His name's Marco. Marco. He has an English name. What about Dad, Uncle Glenn? Well, I, I don't have anything to apologize to Pa about. That's why I went to see him. I didn't want him to worry. Worry? The truth is, Pa comes to me in my dreams at night. And every time he says he's worried about me being all alone. So when I met Marco and he turned out to be a good guy and we started getting serious, I went out to buy Pa's favorite vegetable dumplings and I told him I had met someone and that we can care for each other and so that he could stop worrying. And when I went to bed that night, Pa came again. And in this dream, he was standing at the foot of my bed smiling at me. And then he left and he shut the dream behind. It's been so long, nine years. Time to move on. Oh, Uncle Twin. Yeah? 
Yes? You and Marco have to get married. Ducky. It's been so difficult, but after all that struggling, you're able to get married at long last. You've met the right person. Of course, you should get married as soon as possible. Mm, that's right, Uncle Jun. At your age, once you meet someone decent, it's time to figure out. We're all together. Girls, we've talked about it, and it's a possibility, but let's wait and see. Marriage isn't its own thing. It affects lots of other things. It isn't love. It isn't life. It's just a social thing, and it's an administrative thing more or less like politics. Think about it. If Taiwan ever becomes part of China, I don't know if it will or when. Won't that database of people in gay marriages become a blacklist? A blacklist of people with, whom the Chinese government could never tolerate? If that day comes, what if queer people end up getting re-educated and queer families are put into concentration camps. We'll all end up like poor people in Xinjiang, herded together, taught how to think, brainwashed. Or maybe even in a black jail, permanently cut off from society, tortured, electrocuted, starved, and maybe even chemically castrated. At dawn, we get up to sing communist anthems. They drag us from our cells to rooms without surveillance cameras and gang rape us. They teach us that throughout history, marriage has just been for one man one woman. We self-criticize until we don't even trust ourselves. Then I'll have to put on a fake smile, take a woman by the hand, thank the party for putting me on the right track and fixing my sexual orientation. I'll smile and smile and praise the party. Do you really think that these things couldn't happen? Hi everyone, if you are standing, please feel free to come to the front and um, sit on the floor. I realize it's not the most inviting thing, but <laughs> there is room. Hello, I'm the director of the book of the book, Liu Jianguo. This is Liu Jianguo, the playwright of the next piece you're about to see, Why Don't We Get Married? And I'm Jeremy Tiang, the translator. We wanted to give you a bit of the context for the next play, which contains excerpts of Taiwanese opera. This is a form in which female performers regularly take on male roles. In some of the excerpts in this play, Jian Guo will be the singing voice of the actors while they speak the words in English. In other excerpts, they will recite the songs as verse. So although we'll be speaking the songs in this English reading, in a full production, they would be sung in full Taiwanese opera style, which you'll just have to imagine for tonight. But we hope this conveys the intention of the playwright. Thank you and enjoy the show.
Sir, His Highness has completed his morning duties and is hastening back to the palace. He will be here momentarily. The eunuch takes a first leave off the bed. What is that? This morning, His Highness had to depart from his morning duties, but you were asleep upon his sleeve. So as not to wake you, he took his sword and sliced off his sleeve. The eunuch hands the cut sleeve to Dong Xian. by the moonlit wind, I slept by this fragrant cut sleeve. What great fortune for Dong Xian, so much affection in one person. Emperor Liu Xin enters. Mountains and rivers are my domain, but all is humble for love. Hi, my darling. I would spend my entire life with you, never leave. My name is Lin Zhao Ai. We were in the middle of rehearsing a new show when my girlfriend proposed to me. Oh yes, we're both Taiwanese opera performers. On stage, I play a man, but in real life, I'm a woman. As for Yu Huan, she... Shamble, look at this. Gentle wind strokes the water. A pair of lovebirds drift by, bound together forever, their hearts eternally entwined. If I were a woman, would you be my love? You are perfect inside and out. What a shame you're not a woman. It started five years ago. I'm sure of that. The moment I felt my heart stir at the sight of this woman, playing the role of a woman, playing a man, to seduce a woman, playing a man. <laughs> I'm not sure what it was about her that attracted me. Maybe that's how Yang Shanbo himself felt. Male and female, female and male, all contained within her, floating elegantly to her own rhythm. The green hills and jade willows smiled at my foolishness, the past was sweet as twilight clouds as I went joyously to Ying Tai. At that moment, when I realized Ying Tai was a woman, I hurried to her in bliss. Along the way, my memories returned and warmed my heart. Shenbo, it is I, Ying Tai. I am a maiden. I will take your hand in marriage, drop by drop to the present moment. We wait for, we the, wait clouds for the clouds to part and light to appear. Pretty good. It was, wasn't it? What did you think of that young guy? Bad. 
and handsome too. <laughs> oh, should we go around to the stage door and tip her? Like how you brought me backstage when I was a kid? No one tips our prep performers anymore these days. Maybe they do. The Butterfly Lovers is a very traditional show after all. Let me see, where's the stage door? No need for that. Fine. What's up with you? You bring me to see a show, acting all weird. Mom. <laughs> Am I wrong? There's something I need to tell you. Let's grab a coffee. You're lying. I don't like this one at all. I do. Quick, let's book it. That's this is the one. Ah, this one's fully booked too. Damn it. Is every queer in Taiwan getting married right now? It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> Straight people get married too. <laughs> right. So, seeing as we can't find a place we're happy with, maybe this whole wedding thing isn't so urgent? Hmm? Nothing. Oh my god, married, a wedding at last. This is so sudden. Are we moving too fast? The red mist is rising. I'm filling with fear. Is this really me? Am I still here? Me, a wife. Can I really commit? Am I really ready? Is this really it? What will my friends say? Will they relate? Can I, can I deal with this? Is this my fate? Am I really, really getting, getting married? Hey, uh, do you think we need to invite Pei Fong? Uh, are you that close? Not really, but she's tied with Xinhua and Yahweh. So, so if we invite Xinhua and Yahweh and she finds out. By that logic, we'd have to invite Ku Yi too. What, you haven't invited her? Oh, please, she's the most annoying person in the world. But if we don't, it'll be so awkward when we see her next. She won't even know we got married. Oh, you think we can keep it a secret with 27 women on the guest list? And three very gossipy gay men. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to keep their mouths shut. Waited, Waited so, so long, long now gay marriage is here. Yet, yet so, so many problems, problems so much fear. fear. We'll tell our friends, is that too many guests? Booking, Booking a venue, any requests? requests? No one warned us, no one said how hard this would be. I'd, I'd rather, rather be, be dead. dead. Should we elope? Go to City Hall? Just call it off? Or, or just, just don't call? Will, will the, the new law stand? No one can say, this is too much, make it go more. away. This is too much. <coughs> I'll marry Kun Yi, you handle Pei Fong and Yu Ying. Yu Ying. Hello, same logic as could need be consistent. We hardly know her. Maybe I should ask my masseuse and our doorman? If our doorman wants to come to our wedding, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> Why do we need a bunch of people we hardly know to come wish us well? And the ones we actually do want to share our happiness whether all busy or not coming. Who are you talking about? Ting Yu. Also, Zi Yun, Xu Hui, my parents. You haven't told your parents? <coughs> no. So I, I don't really know your mom, but you came out you successfully came out four years ago. Maybe your mom's changed her mind. Maybe she hasn't. Well, how will you know if you don't ask? Or maybe it's better if I never find out. Let's talk about something else. You can't go on avoiding the issue. I'm not avoiding anything. So I. Hey, what do you think of Yi's invitation? I'm really getting married. Am I ready for this? Am I ready to face the chaos of marriage? Just made of lace. I'm <laughs> really getting married. How about this? We'll uh, we'll use the invitations you like, and you can go on avoiding your parents. But I'll handle. Uh, I'll uh, I'll hire windstorm thrash metal. No fan. What does this have to do with anything? Hey. No fan. I am begging you. Please. They're really good. They're just okay. <laughs> <laughs> and very expensive. Can't we? Use recorded music. I mean, we, we don't even know how the venue will be or what sound equipment they'll have. Maybe they won't even be able to host a band. What kind of wedding doesn't have a band? Oh my god. How, how many guests? guests? What, what should we wear? wear? Who's, Who's doing, doing what? what? Who, Who even cares? cares? Why, Why are we fighting? Is this the end? Why what is this costing so very much? much? Who, Who needs, needs tradition? tradition? Hey, hey, let's, let's go, go Dutch. Why, Why are we fighting? fighting? Is, is this, this the end? end? Why don't we get songs? You know, the accompanist from our last show? No, but Taiwanese opera at our wedding? Well, the song probably is. No, we're not, we're not doing that. Who on earth can afford to rent a venue, get catering, and take wedding photos, and print invitations, and buy a cake, and hire a band? It's, it's too much. Everyone goes through this when they get married. It's not always like this, is it? I think we should maybe think about
about saving up for a few more years. Yes, right. Maybe we should avoid the issue <coughs> for a few more years. I am not avoiding anything. You've never gone through anything like this. Your family is fine with you being gay. You've never heard those words coming from your mother's mouth. So I. You never had to see your mother's face crumple with her disappointment in you. You never saw her eyes fill with disgrace because she knew what you just said was true. You never had your family turn away and suddenly become so very far. You never heard the words your parents say that landed in your heart, each one a scar. But if we want to get married, these problems, you'll have to face them sooner or later. I'm not sure I'm really ready for this. We have a show today. I have to get ready. So, hey, mm -hmm. we've seen the show and we've had our coffee. What did you want to say to me? Mom, Mike proposed to me. What? <laughs> That's fantastic! You are being so mysterious. I thought for sure something had happened. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me when we came to dinner last month? Huh? We could have planned the wedding together. Don't get too excited, Mom. I'm just happy. Quick, get married. I want a grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. What's wrong? You don't like him? He seems to treat you so well. I like him very much, and he uh, loves me and takes good care of me. But, Mom, I'm going to ask you something, and can you, can you <coughs> answer me honestly? What is it? Do you ever regret marrying Dad? What do you want to know? Remember how I told you everything when I was a kid? Well, I'm not a kid anymore. You can tell me stuff, too. That's how it was for women back then. When the time came, you got married and had kids. That's just how it was. But it wasn't Dad you were in love with. Am I right? Mom, you, you actually like women, don't you? <laughs> what did you say? It's fine, it's fine. Society's so liberal these days. When I was a kid, you used to bring me to see Taiwanese opera. I remember you always liked that actress who played young men. Yeah, Feng Hua. Right. I really liked her a lot back then. I did. I was obsessed. But then you stopped liking opera. Was that because she retired? No. I still like Taiwanese opera. But the same songs, the same old time and tunes, stirring so many thoughts. Who can know? The, the same, same stage, stage, the same, same gongs and drums. I search for you in all other faces. Her, Her eyes lowered, the song flowing, four, four seasons, seasons turned upside down. down. A hard a single tear in the midst of a thunderstorm. A the sky full of stars, but one twinkles differently to the rest. A lonely night, alone by lamplight. The cold wind blowing. Married at 17, looking at your childhood home. The spring breeze has passed. You're a wife now, a child in your arms, loneliness in your heart. Sit in the audience, weeping for the poor thing on stage. Don't be scared. No one knows. If I cry, no one knows. The Imperial Court. Dong Xian has just been appointed the Grand Minister of War. Liu Xin sits center stage. A minister addresses him. Your Highness, in this day and age, the ruler of this kingdom must consider his duty to his people, his stewardess of the land, 
He cannot act out of selfish emotions. To appoint Dong Xiang as the Grand Master of War, oh, your highness. Nature has divided us into male and female, each with our own roles. Your Highness, you obey the heavens above, you respond to the people below. But now, you have succumbed to the lust of male flesh and overturned the natural order. I fear this will destroy the legitimacy of the throne. You, you, what is it you want me to do? Put Dong Xiang to death! How dare you? Officers to the dungeon with him! Your Highness, we risk death to come here, all for the sake of this great kingdom. Please forgive your humble servant for stepping out of line when I say, Officers, arrest Dong Xian. Highness, my love, let him go! This is treason. Are you turning against me? Wake up, Your Highness. Stand to your foolish behavior. You have lost the face of this court. The Empress Dowager has issued a secret orders. Look! <clears throat> I understand. Highness, take Dong Xian to the dungeon. There weren't so many choices. Now you have gay, straight, bisexual, all these words. I only learned them by hearing your, you young people talk. I didn't think that much about it. All I knew was every time I went to the opera, it made me so, so happy. Sometimes I just look at her and want to smile. And as I smile, my tears would flow. So many sad times. And she was the one by my side. Maybe it's not as simple to put a name on that feeling. I know what you're thinking, Pete. But when we got married in the, those days, it was different from now. I, I didn't marry your dad out of love. The old folks said to do it, and we got married. If you could do it over, would you still marry dad? Your father and I supported each other. An ordinary household. If I could choose again, it's not like I would have married the actress. There was just a beautiful image I had in my heart. So what is marriage even for? Is it just another layer of bureaucracy, or duty, or insurance, or? I think all we could do is find a sort of bowl. Uh, to put things in. What do you call that? A um, container? Right. Just a place to put our love. I found my container on stage. Hey, you and I could really love each other. You need a container, too, to keep your love safe. Whether that's marriage or living together or whatever, you have to find your own answer. In the dungeon, Liu Xin enters. Dong Xian looks desolate and weak. My darling, when I see my love, tears stream down, and I could tear the world apart. 
such beauty, so harshly treated. Who will hear my lament? Your Highness, I don't wish for riches or glory if we could fly away together. Together, all four seasons of the year, finding new lands for us. The heartless rain assaults us, tears shimmer before my eyes. The universe fills with stars, and for an instant, comets collide. A decree from the Emperor. The Grand Minister of War, Dongxian, has bewitched the monarch, besmirched the court, and brought misfortune to the state. This would normally be grounds for beheading. Yet, in acknowledgement of his past service, his sentence is commuted to exile. He must leave the palace and never set eyes on the Emperor again. Lord Dong, this is grace indeed from the Dowager. The Emperor has pleaded to preserve your life. I wish you were not you and I were not I, so we could be two ordinary people in love. I don't long for high office. I don't want your precious jewels and gold. I wish we were peasants, an ordinary couple. Cast off your power and status, and happiness welcomes you in. Ordinary people facing their troubles, newlyweds still need to eat. Will we worry about food and clothing? Will our wedding end up costing too much? Will we follow all the old traditions? Will the dowry be sufficient? How many guests should we invite? Will there be too many gifts? And what if we quarrel about these little things, arguing from morning to night? An ordinary couple still has problems, don't you agree? The most important thing is that you're with me. These troubles don't matter. They don't mean a thing. My darling. Our love gets, gets us, us through, through winter, winter to, to spring. spring.
unbuttons his shirt, and plugs power cables into his body. He blows up a red balloon, timing himself. He repeats this several times until he's surrounded by red balloons. Karen enters his scene. Sorry to wait you for that. <laughs> it's fine. When you get to my age, you just fall asleep sitting here. It's been hard on you. But look, the balloons are getting bigger and bigger. Your recovery's going well. If only I could change the rest of my organs to artificial ones, too. That would be so much easier. Don't talk like that. You still have one of your own, long as you want to treasure it. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, I'm just old. Don't treat me like some patient. Professor, the doctor reminded you not to move when you're charging. It's dangerous. <laughs> uh, what do you doubt, all right? I was fully charged a while ago. All right, forget it. I'll just stay plugged in for now. All right. We are more or less packed up, Professor. Thanks for all your help. It's a good thing you're still around. Shijong said he'd be here a little later to help out. He told you that? Yes, I told him you've decided to move into the retirement home. Oh, why'd you go and tell him that? Professor, you, I mean, don't you want to see Shijong? My son has been gone from my life for two years. I went to his house and he wouldn't even see me. What could I say to him? He gave me a letter to pass to you, remember? Oh, that thing? I threw it away as soon as I read it. Oh. Did he mention the surgery to you? Um. Fine. Help me talk some sense into him. Tell him to forget about that. What, what's it called? Sexual orientation reassignment surgery? I don't think I'm the right person. He's just running away from his problems. Just because you're gay doesn't mean you don't have to man up. <laughs> Professor. He blames every problem he has on his homosexuality. Um. You know, the most uh, things in life has nothing to do with whether you like men or women. Besides, genetic surgery has astronomical risks, not to mention it's illegal. Uh, Just find a way to help me tell him. What could I say to him? That wall. What, what about it? She shown me love drawing when he was a kid. He scribbled all over that wall one time passed out when he saw it. But it was too cute to cover up, so we let him keep going. Finally, the whole thing was covered in color. It looked great. I know, you, you told me. Then you accumulated too much stuff, so you had to move the bookcase, and then you couldn't see it. A few years ago, you redecorated and forgot to tell the painters, so they covered it in white. Well, the strange thing is, even though it was covered, it's just a white wall, I could still see the colors swirling all around it. They're still there, underneath. Susan grew up in this house. I was planning to leave it to him. So do you think he still would want it? Well, I, uh... All the while he was growing up, we made all sorts of arrangements for him, always for his own good. And yet young Shijong went against you at every turn, stumbling down his own path, not happy until he was bruised all over. I really regret it. If I had known how this would turn out, I'd have been stricter with him. We had it all set but he insists on suffering his own way. He's been going through a rough time. He lost his job, then his boyfriend left him, and he needs time to accept that. You and your husband, that he only has one of his two fathers left. Let's have some tea, Professor. Mm. Karen starts rinsing the cups. I know all understand. Could I ask you to do something for me, Professor? When Shijong gets here, could you have a proper talk with him? Did Shijong say anything to you about his daddy? His daddy? Never mind. Karen pours the first brew into a cup, then wets the teapot with it. Mm. The color of this red clay pot is really mellowing. <laughs> You've had this for decades, haven't you? My father left it to me. It must be at least a hundred years old. It's beautiful. You have to use clay pots. If you neglect them, they lose their shine. That's true. I can't handle these things right now. It's a good thing you're around. Mm. Always happy to help, Professor. It should be family, though. I'm here. <laughs> Same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a time when I thought you'd be my daughter-in-law. Karen, let her 
it's good to see you like this. Hmm? The good thing she's young has you to take care of her. Well, we're old friends. It's the least I can do. No. Many people realize they're gay in their teens or even earlier. But to be a late bloomer, so you got to hurt. That was a long time ago, and he didn't have a choice about a lot of it. You shouldn't let him have his way either. You'll catch his depression. No, Shijong's always been good to me, and he's not depressed. Did he really not say anything to you? About what? Nothing, nothing. For the past two years, whenever I wanted to know how he's doing, I've had to ask you. You must be sick of it. Professor, I... Hmm? Tea's ready. Good like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things going well in the new lab? Very well, thanks for recommending me. <laughs> I'm glad it suits you. Not like the Dallas Labyrinth Lab. What are you researching on? Editing artificial genes through nanotech AI so we can induce developmental shifts and establish rules for the way they mutate. Hang on, isn't that Howe's area? Since when were you working on that? We're in the same research team. Oh, stop depending on other people. You keep doing that. Huh? I've got something to show you. Okay. Long Yong goes over to the bookcase. Uh, help me move this, huh? Huh? Here. Long Yong shows her where to push the bookcase. She tries her best, but it doesn't move anything. <laughs> I'm sorry, Professor. wanted to show me behind the shelf. No, it's... He starts searching Sorry. through the cardboard boxes. Shishong enters with large tattoos on his face and arms. Hi. You got here just in time, Shishong. Help me move this bookcase. What for? And Professor Long says there's something behind it. What kind of thing? Your drawing. Something you did when you were a kid, it fell down bad. Come on. Here's Joe and Karen try to move it. We bought it, we thought we bought you lots of paper, but you never touched it. You only wanted to scribble on the wall. One time only, you did an actual drawing of that park outside. It was really beautiful. <coughs> you put a rainbow and a red balloon, all that green grass, and your daddy and I was there too. It was like heaven. Your daddy loved that picture. He had it framed, put it on top of the bookcase. He said you made our family complete. With you, everything is perfect. Shi Xiong and Karen are unable to move it. Ah, forget it. Look, Shi Xiong, are, are these the marks your dad made to show how tall you were? Daddy made those. Shi Xiong. bottles of mineral water. The chlorine taste in this tap water will be too loose. Oh, but I brewed them from this filter. Just go. Right. Um, would you two like anything to eat? Karen is about to exit when Shi Xiong cuts her arm. Could you? Right, I'll, I'll get some. Lang Yong returns to his lounger and resumes blowing up balloons. Shi Xiong picks up a framed newspaper cutting and carefully studies it. Miracle? Coincidence, a family of three, all homosexuals, a gay married couple, had a son through a surrogate who turned out to be gay too, attracting media attention and presenting a new model in the era of alternative families. Why do you keep this ridiculous article? Our family was happiest then. From then on, we were recognized no matter where we went. I'm proud that we were a gay family. Oh. <laughs> Long Yong accidentally lets go, and the red balloon in his hands whizzes through the air. Shi Xiong picks up the deflated balloon and returns it to him. Are those you? Does that matter? Well, you're free to get a tattoo if you like, but on your face. I like it very much. <laughs> it gets people's, people's attention, so they see me. Long Yong continues blowing balloons. Mm -hmm. 
come help me have a look at this. I haven't been feeling so well lately. What's going on? The, the battery just isn't charging. The alarm will go off any second. Let me have a look. How would you feel now? How could I feel? I'm charging. <laughs> Why don't we install a computer receiver? That way you'd be able to monitor your own artificial organs. No, thank you. Put one more gadget in me and I would be basically a robot. It'll keep you alive. It's not that great to live a long time. When I was dating your daddy, I promised him I'd live longer than him so that I wouldn't have to abandon him. Who knew I'd be keeping my promise this well? That was 40 years ago. What now? Why do I have to keep clinging on? As long as these little machines keep working, you live forever. The alarm sounds. That's happened quite a few times. It wakes me up at night. Hang on. I'll turn it off. Shi Xiong silences the alarm. The batteries are old. The display says full when they're only half charged. I knew it. I've made you an appointment, Dad. The medical technician will come round and change your batteries. But hang on. Even if we leave them in, the batteries will never charge. But that's OK. Just, just let it charge. Miss this. Hmm? It's been a long time since you called me dad. Really? When your dad was still around, you called me puppy. Dad, I've decided. You're so much like your daddy, Xiao. Dad? Your looks, your talent, your stubbornness, and your kindness. I'm not like him. But that's because you never cared about what you have, but instead you go chasing after what you'll never be able dad, to Dad, I've made up my mind. I'm going to have the surgery. Pulling out the cables. Just keep an eye on the time. So I need to remind you that surgery is illegal. Sure, the animal trials were successful, but they're not allowed to test it on humans. I don't think anyone would take the risk. I've made an application to the court. There'll be a hearing. Shi Xiong hands an envelope to Lang Yong, who pulls out a thick stack of documents and starts reading. <clears throat> Humanitarian considerations? What do you think you are, a refugee or something? I don't understand. What's so good about being strange? I just want to decide for myself. Decide what? What do you want to decide? You know what people said when I was young? That being gay was a choice, and if you choose it, you deserve to die. If I saw as much as kiss the man, they'd throw stones at you. What, did you know that? Oh, the world hasn't changed that much since then. It's changed honest. a lot. Every era has its own difficulties. Yeah, sure. We all have these rights now, but that hasn't changed everyone's mind. Still, we have to believe that we're on the right track. I've made up my mind. I'm just letting you know. You, you, you just worked up. This won't do you any good. Long Yong feeds the documents into the shredder. Dad, I, um, I want you to be at the hearing. What for? To watch you embarrass yourself in public? I want you to confess. What? My lawyer will formally notify you. He says this will increase our chances. I have nothing to say. You have to confess so I can... I have nothing to say. Dad, I, I, I didn't come here to fight. I have nothing to say. You illegally misused the lab's equipment to alter my genes and make me gay. For God's sake, I have done nothing wrong! Why did you think you had the right to decide how I would turn out? It was still up to chance. We used gene editing to increase the chances you would be born a homosexual, but all kinds of things affect genes you may not have been. But I was! My whole life has been decided by the two of you. From the very beginning, who gave you that right? Shishong? Dad, you're just a smug, self-centered, centered bastard, you son of a bitch. What does it mean to be gay? It's something I'm proud of. Are you sure that's pride and not arrogance? Xiong, your daddy and I cherished the fact that we were gay. We loved our community. We adored this life. So why would we pass it on? So by being born, I was fated to become your political billboard? You don't really think that. You're just confused. No! I feel disgusted to be gay! 
That makes you ashamed of me, doesn't it? Xi Xiong, it's best to be gay. Oh, what does that mean? It's my belief that the best thing in this world is to be gay. That's not an answer. You just repeated the same words. That's my answer. Xiong, please listen to me. We're gay. The purpose, our purpose is love. Thanks to us, human beings aren't mere animals that exist only to be. <clears throat> if you really think that, why did you have me? We had to so that our love would continue. And has it? Homosexuality. <clears throat> Homosexuality is genetic. Sex is genetic. But not love. You failed. Yes, it hurts. But any experiment is worth it. Xiao, even if we were wrong to tell you, your daddy and I worked hard all these years to give you the best of everything. We were so happy to start this country. And, and you went out with Chen Xianghua for quite a while. Didn't that go well? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you were the ones who introduced him to me. <laughs> Xianghua didn't leave because there was anything wrong with you. He simply wasn't good enough for you. Oh. You don't need to do this just to take revenge. Please, this has nothing to do with him. Then you don't need to take revenge on me. Ah, don't flatter yourself. Then you're taking revenge on yourself. Why do I have to be doing this out of revenge? I've watched you grow up. I know what's on your mind. Oh, that's right. The way my brain functions, it's all down to your gene editing. <laughs> Come in. How long were you planning to stand there? Yes. And he's Before ready, Professor. All right. Karen pours the tea and then gets a cup of iced coffee from a teapot bag and hands it to Shi Xiong. Dad, no talking. Let's not ruin this cup of tea. Dad, you have to be a no. mystery. If you don't show up, you know that letter Daddy left me when he died? I'll enter it as evidence. Will you let me drink my tea in peace, you motherfucking- Dad, you can't keep deciding my life for me. Karen is still here. She's read Daddy's letter. You didn't say anything to me. We hadn't decided what to do. Oh, we. So you're part of this foolishness. Professor, there's an academic dimension to this issue. You're tired hand and foot, that's why your research amounts to nothing. This is very important for Xizhong. Don't bother, all he wants to hear is his own voice. But that's enough for today, Karen, why don't you go? Professor, please listen to me. Go, you don't, you, you can't speak here. Maybe you should just go. Karen smashes the teapot to the ground. What are you doing? Karen? It's 2049, why do you still think women are only good for making your tea and buying your coffee? Professor, scientists can't play God with other people's lives. What a shame I don't believe in God. <laughs> You'd rather believe in quantum mechanics. People have the right to decide their own future. That's an old tune, Hi, Karen. You're just showing how intellectually lazy you are. <sighs> I know the idea of free will can be at odds with the study of biology, but... You're too young. You don't understand what parents are willing to do for their children. But, Professor... Karen, please don't interrupt me, all right? Karen, you've always been a good girl. Serious girl, but now you must realize that what your limits are. If your parents hadn't pushed you to study hard since you were a kid and done everything they could to get you into good schools, do you think you'd still be where you are now? If you had to get there under your own steam, for God's sake, I'm speaking. If you don't know how painful all this hard work would be, you wouldn't have changed your genes. Would, wouldn't you have changed your genes to make yourself a little more intelligent? What you've done, Professor. Every genetic scientist is going to come under attack. They may even shut down our research institute. So now we have to be pragmatic. No. If you lose your job, should I take responsibility? <laughs> no, no. Preventing Xu Xiong from having his own hearing is the best way to keep this research institute open. Isn't that true? Karen, the dad, you've gone too far. I'm sorry. I was just, uh, Wait. I had to, I'm leaving. Wait, Karen. Long Yong hands her a folder. I'm getting old and forgetful. I say something and it goes right out of my head. Take this. I presume you're never coming back, so I wanted you to have it now. What is it? Your future research. I'm sorry, Professor, but I do still have some dignity. This is one of your lab reports. When you were still in college. Oh? I kept it all this time. And 
wondered when you'd take it up again. Unfortunately, you never noticed all the potential here. And there's some related material I found in the past few years for all of you. Take it. The life is your own. You decide what to do with it. Karen, now me. I don't understand you. I really, what I believe is the right thing. Yes, sure, you're always right. I wanted to have a proper talk with you. Oh. Although I don't think we've ever had a real conversation. That's true. <clears throat> you're always closer to your daddy even as a kid. <laughs> you were never home. You grew up so quickly. By the time I realized I ought to spend more time with you, you didn't need me. I'll always be you. Dad, after my surgery, I'm going to marry Karen. Karen is a good girl. Don't waste her time. I love her, Dad, and she feels the same way. You could still marry her even without the surgery. Do you really think that would make us happy? Aren't you always saying that love can transcend all sorts of barriers? I just want a normal life. You are normal. <laughs> think we're fooling. Being straight is normal. Being gay is normal. Everyone is normal. No. Back when I was still in a petri dish, before you decided whether I loved men or women, that's when I was normal. Even if we hadn't done anything, you might still have ended up gay. Then I'd be normal. But you did do it. And now I'll never be normal. Genes are just genes, Xiong. They can't change what's in your heart. They can't change who you are. Ah, aren't you a genetic scientist? What's the point of all your research then? Hmm? Sexual orientation, criminal activity, free will. All these things are just the result of complex interactions between neurons and hormones. Psychology is fake science. Religion is a lie. Whether God's existence is just something our genes tell our brain to believe. Right? As Shi Xiong speaks, he stomps on the red balloons on the floor. Do you understand what a cruel thing you've done? I love Karen, and she truly loves me. She's given me everything. I want to be with her forever, but when I try to return her love, even when she, we kiss or make love, all I want to be is fucking a man instead. Do you know how painful that is? I don't want to keep lying to myself, and I definitely don't want to deceive Karen. That day when I stood before you trembling and said I thought I might be gay too, the two of you hugged me tight and said I was so brave. Do you know how much strength you gave me that moment? I felt so blessed to be part of this family, to be born in this era. But the letter Daddy left me shattered my world. The world hasn't changed. Only you. Oh no, it's changed. Everything's changed. Before I was born, the two of you decided I was gay. You were sure of this long before I was. How do you think I ought to feel about that? Hmm? I love men. All I think about is dick. And it's my father who decided that. You destroyed me. What gave you the right to do this to me? Being born gay is the most beautiful thing that's ever happened to me. That's why we wanted you to be gay. It was the best present we can give you. The greatest love. But I don't want Then it can't be helped because you are our son. So I had no choice. No one has a choice to be born. But even before I was born, I was destined to be your son. This life just isn't fair like that. Oh, that's it? You could cover your whole face with tattoos, slice it off, you'd still be our son. I hate you both. That's fine. And show. Why don't you just accept the way you are now? I've made up my mind. All right. That's all right. That's all you have to say. You've made up your mind. What else can I do? <laughs> Why is it so hard to get an apology out of you? I want to say sorry because I've done nothing wrong, and I'm not going to again. Dad, how could you? They could send me to prison, and I still won't apologize. <laughs> 
I have no regrets. I'm proud to be gay, and I'm proud that my son is gay. I shouldn't have come. You are his son. We only had you because we wanted a gay son. No. If I had apologized, that would mean that all this was wrong and that our love was wrong. But that's not like that. You're our son. No matter what you become, you'll always be our son. Sion! What about you, her son? <laughs> Long Yong crashes to the floor. Dad! Dad! Oh no! Shu Sion lifts Long Yong back onto his lounger, rips open his shirt, and reconnects the cables. The alarm sounds. Please, 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 please. The alarm stops. Dad! A little accident. The system will have notified an ambulance. No, no, not like this. <laughs> Look at me. How did I end up like this? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Sion, the bookcase. Huh? Please, the drawing. Drawing. Sion pulls the bookcase. It crashes onto the ground. A window is revealed. The setting sun blazes through the trees, filling the entire living room with light. There's nothing here. I'll go get help. Shushio, I love you. We only wanted the best for you. Long Yong plucks out the cables. The alarm sounds immediately. With a great effort, he gets to his feet, stumbles to the window, and pulls it open. A strong wind rushes into the room, causing the papers on the ground to rise into the air. The alarm fades, replaced by the sound of children playing in, in the park outside. A red balloon drifts past the window. I found
everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 All right, wonderful. Hello? Testing? Okay. Yep. One, two. One, two. Oh, oh. Wait. we're live. Yeah. <laughs> One. Good. All right, thank you for coming out, everybody. We're going to have a quick um, panel discussion, then we'll open it up for some Q&A. Um, first, let's just give another round to our fabulous players. <laughs> so, um, hello. I am your moderator for this evening. My name is Linnea, and I'm the literary manager for the National Queer Theater. And we at National Queer Theater are so happy to and grateful to be partnering with the Siegel Center this evening to put on this wonderful um, evening of theater. Um, at NQT, our mission is to foster and support LGBTQ communities through social justice in the performing arts. Um, in plain terms, that means we aim to produce new plays by queer playwrights and offer classes to LGBTQ youth and elders. Um, uh, in addition to our annual season, we also uh, produce the C Criminal Queerness Festival, which is a showcase of uh, fully new, fully produced plays by playwrights from countries that criminalize homosexuality with World Pride this year, with plans underway for our 2020 festival. Uh, we are deeply committed to using art to uplift underrepresented and underheard voices, and we are very excited to showcase these exceptional playwrights this evening. Um, so to start us off, why don't we go down the line and do a quick introduction, your name, your affiliation with the program, and for our playwrights, how you're feeling after hearing your plays. Maybe do a quick hand, handshake test. Yes. <laughs> Uh, hello, everybody. I'm uh, Li Menghuan. You can call me Da Zi. In Taiwanese, means a uh, big guy. <laughs> and, and, yeah, I'm the writer of the Red Balloon, and, and I like uh, uh, sci-fi play and gay, gay play too. <laughs> so I mix <laughs> the two together. <laughs> yeah. I'm very nervous now. <laughs> Thank you. 大家好，我是建国，我是。我们结婚好吗？呃，编剧。嗯，在台湾我是担任戏曲的呃编导，所以这次很高兴能够把我们的传统艺术带到纽约来跟大家见面，很开心，谢谢。Hello, um, my name is Jian Guo. Uh, I am uh, a uh, playwright in uh, Taiwan, usually uh, mostly uh, working in traditional theater. I'm very happy and honored to uh, introduce my play here. Hello everyone, I'm Zhao Qiyun. I'm the playwright of The Loving Time, and I really like your laughing. I feel so happy with you. <laughs> <laughs> so. Hi everyone, um, I'm Michael Liebenloft. Uh, I directed The Plays Tonight, and I'm also the artistic director of Gung Ho Projects, which is one of the partnering organizations. Hi, I'm Jeremy Tiang. I translate this play. Hi, I'm Pao. I'm the curator of this event. All right, fantastic. So my first question is actually for you, Pao. Um, so you answered a version of this question yesterday, but humor me a little bit with the repetition. Uh, this is your second year with the New Plays from Taiwan program. Um, last year you were a playwright. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the mission and the ethos of this program and uh, a little bit about your experiences here curating? Sure, I think uh, Yu Qian has covered most of the things at the beginning, so I'm, I just, I, I won't repeat. Um, I'll just talk about a little bit about my experience curating with these wonderful playwrights. Um, I've been working in, in Taipei, in Taiwan theater scene for 15 years as a playwright, director, and performer. So I know them more or less. We all know each other, it's a small circle. So I, I cherish, I embrace this opportunity to really like having deeper conversation with them. I know how fragile, how vulnerable as a playwright is. You basically have to really open up yourself, uh, no matter what you see on stage. Sort of it either represent what you're experiencing right now or what you're trying to escape from. So it's a very, very delicate thing. So um, for me, it's very interesting during the discussion with them. I um, I try to be very respectful, careful, yet honest, 
to sharing my experience and, and feedback to them. Um, so I'm so happy and so proud and so honored to have this opportunity to work with them and with the whole team. And thank you for coming here today. Thank you. Wonderful. My next question is for you, Jeremy. So um, translation is so much more than just plugging a piece of, of text into Google Translate and pressing <laughs> print. Um, it's about translating gestures, cultural symbols, and words that may or may not exist in one language or the other. Um, it's in itself a creative endeavor. Um, could you, uh, what was the translation process like for you? What kind of, what kind of challenges did you encounter? Um, all this came together quite fast because Gay Marriage just passed in May and this whole program then happened quite quickly. We commissioned the playwrights. Um, I had a very short time to do the translation, which was um, exhilarating. And <laughs> <laughs> then um, I was able to be in the rehearsal room making a lot of changes on the fly, um, seeing directly what worked and what didn't and responding to that. Um, so I was, I was still doing a lot of rewrites up to today, which was great. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, translating theatre, I think, has its own challenges um, because theatre is such a local form and most American audiences I knew wouldn't be familiar with what Taiwanese theatrical forms would look like, particularly as one of the plays had traditional Taiwanese opera in it. Um, so there was a lot of cultural translation and trying to... Um, Translate it in such a way that the plays would be legible to an American audience, but not domesticate a way what made them special. And so that they would still be recognizable to the Taiwanese people and you would also be in the audience. Um, and it's a balancing act between the two. Um, I think a lot of translation is finding that middle point and finding a text that would also be accessible to the American actors to perform. Absolutely. Um, so you're a very prolific translator. I won't embarrass you with your own resume, but um, you've translated uh, many novels. And what, what, is the, what are the differences that you find between translating a novel from a piece of work that's going to be performed on stage? Um, well, with a novel, you're more directly connected to the intact terms end user. Um, so what I put on the page and get past the editor will go directly to readers, but with um, theatre translation, you're thinking about another artist or <coughs> group of artists after you've done your job, um, the director, the actors, the designers, everyone involved in creating a production, even for a reading like this. I was very conscious in my translation that what I did would then have to be passed on to someone else. So you have to think very collaboratively when you're translating theatre, um, and you're sort of part of the bigger thing. There, there really has to be the sense of mediating between the playwrights on one hand and between the production team on the other um, before you even start thinking about the audience. Um, you're just, I guess, I'm reaching for a metaphor. <laughs> Some kind of medium, come back to me. <laughs> okay, I'll let you think about that. I'll move along to uh, Michael, our director for the evening. Um, so what, what were some of the unique challenges, um, what are some of the unique challenges of working with um, new work, and especially new work that's also being translated at the same time? And uh, what, what sorts of elements do you find that you have to balance in a room where performance is meeting translation, which is meeting development? Yeah, it's been a wild <laughs> four days. <laughs> um, this is, I've done a lot of work um, with writers in the room. This is the first time I think I've worked with the writer and the translator in the room. And it was, it was thrilling, actually. Um, it was a lot smoother in some ways than I expected. And I, I'm just thinking, <laughs> there was one moment in rehearsal the other day when Meng Huan was making changes as Jeremy was making changes <laughs> on different things. And then we sort of had to figure out the, how the chain worked. And, and I was sort of then interpreting that with the actors. Um, and a lot of the cast um, w is also bilingual, so we're sort of moving. There are a lot of both languages um, in the room at the same time. Um, and I think uh, what Jeremy said is absolutely right. Hopefully, it's a, I, I try to have a room where it's an open circuit, so that sort of it begins with the text, then goes through the translation, and then in the conversation with the actors, we're testing things, and sometimes it has to go all the way back around again, and it's sort of uh, I think that it takes a lot of resources and a lot of work to get all of these people in the room together 
but I think it's super important because it's only through that open conversation that we can really make the work happen. Um, and I would love to hear a little bit about how this connects uh, to your work with um, your uh, with Gung Ho Projects. That um, project. Yeah. So Gung Ho Projects is a small company that um, focuses on intercultural work, um, most of the creation of new work, and often bilingual in Mandarin and English. So this is sort of right up our alley, um, and. Uh, it's really about uh, bringing um, artists together in a room, often from different backgrounds, and um, having an artistic conversation from the ground up. So um, it's been it's been wonderful this um, this week. And um, uh, Jeremy and I are also working on another piece that Gung Ho is producing in the spring, um, where Jeremy's the writer, not the translator. So it's a different hat. But um, uh, so that will be in in Brooklyn at Target Margin Theater in April. Fantastic. All right, playwrights, are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> um, so putting up a play is an incredibly collaborative process and um, translating a play at the same time is like just adds another layer on top of that as we've been kind of talking about. Um, did you learn anything new about your play during the translation and rehearsal and production process? Um, because the play I wrote, it's very Taiwanese style. The way they talk is very Taiwanese. I mean, in the Chinese version. So at the beginning, I was a bit worried that after the translation, do we still feel the local essence or like all oh, those warm feeling? Because I think Taiwanese, the way we express is very different as American. So I was a bit worried about that. And, uh, but the first day when we uh, like reading the play, I was like surprised because I think it works quite well. You know, all the jokes delivered and even more funny, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, uh, because this play based on uh, uh, all those people I worked for like 10 years. So basically they're like my family. So I tailor made this kind, those character for them. And I'm really happy that even after the translation, I still feel the bonding. I've, I'm like very familiar with these characters. So I think this kind of uh, warm feeling maybe it's like, like worldwide is all the same, you know, so. I'm really, really, really happy that I bring my Taiwan folks to New York, meet you guys, and make you feel uh, what I felt in Taiwan. And hopefully, you, all of you, like, catch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 在过往我们有参与过这样子就是创作一个新的戏然后是独剧演出尤其又是在国外用不同的语言 用我擅长的喜欢的形式 so basically for me, this is a wonderful and very precious experience. I've never tried this kind of uh, uh, having my plays being performed in, in a foreign country through a foreign language. Um, and especially the play has two different, uh, multiple different uh, uh, forms, uh, Chinese and Taiwanese. And I'm really appreciative of um, Tao for giving me this uh, 
uh, wonderful opportunity and also giving me a lot of, of, of good advice. Um, I'm using this, uh, a, some kind of form that I'm uh, 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 good at. And of course, uh, through the translation, uh, that mixes uh, modern versus modern and ancient languages and you know, Chinese and Taiwanese uh, uh, folk, folk languages is, is hard. But uh, I find it, uh, of course, uh, through reading the play, uh, that uh, mixture has been uh, well uh, performed, presented. So, if I have another chance to present my play, uh, I think I may simplify the form uh, uh, through maybe just single, uh, simple uh, one kind of language uh, to make it uh, a best uh, performance. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm very happy to have the, this nice team, and uh, everyone is very amazing. Uh, the, the director, translator, and the actors, they, they uh, work very hard to approach, approach what, <laughs> what I see. Yeah, and, and there's an interesting thing for me I want to share is at the first time we uh, doing the rehearsal, and the director uh, want everybody in the room to introduce uh, yourself and uh, what's your name, uh, what's your favorite dessert, and what's mm -hmm. your pronoun. Uh, so uh, he, his, him, her, uh, she, her, her. <laughs> For me, it's very interesting because in, ch in Chinese, we only have ta, mm -hmm. just, uh, she is ta, uh, she is ta, he is ta. Yeah, uh, in the speaking form, we only have ta. But, but uh, in English, it's different. Uh, and I, I never seen, seen it before. So I, I think the ta and the she and, uh, she and he shows the difference uh, between the Chinese culture and the West culture. Yeah, I, I, uh, it, it's a very, uh, I, uh, I, I think it, it's uh, amazing for me <laughs> because I, I know the English word he and she, but I never saw it. We are uh, different. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, interesting for me, yeah. Uh, one last question for you playwrights. Uh, what was the most um, exciting or challenging part of working in the US, um, like in, in, in this production process? Um, and are there any processes or traditions that you're interested in trying uh, and taking back home with you? Um, what I really like is work with the group because they are like, like, like everyone says, they are amazing. And especially it's more like a workshop, like everyone works together. So uh, we discuss like everything, why I write it, that, why this character is saying this, and what's the context. And in Taiwan, because normally the director, they are the head of the theater. So we don't really, listen that much and so it's a it's very a good memory for me and also like <laughs> in Taiwan for my like 10 or 12 years writing career like zero of the compliment from actor <laughs> or, like, zero. maybe my work is really shitty I don't know <laughs> but, like uh, the first day of the, the rehearsal, the actor came to me and they said, he says he really likes my play. And I was like, what? <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. I cannot take it. <laughs> so yeah, for me, it's my, you know, the, the, the treasure I found like here. <laughs> I truly agree with you. <laughs> I have the same feeling. 
。另外有一个很对我来说很特别的事情是，呃，歌仔戏、歌仔台湾歌仔戏的演唱。One thing that's very special for me is the the singing or performing part of the Taiwanese opera. 在这之前，我本来一直非常好奇，到底读剧的时候歌仔戏会怎么呈现。那当然，导演。呃，在我在台湾的时候有问过我有没有可能唱一段两段，那我想说，嗯，数量应该不多，<笑>一一,一些呃唱唱演唱我应该还可以处理，但没想到来到这边之后，呃，这个工作下来发现有有一些额外的挑战。I've been very curious about how I could perform or, or present the Taiwanese opera.、Uh, In my own、um, dialect, and then director has asked me to、uh, perform. I thought maybe I could do it, but then I, when I came and tried to、uh, rehearse with them, I find it、uh, quite challenging. 呃，因为导演希望在我们的独剧这个表演里头建立一个规则，呃，就是在戏中戏，就是传统的戏剧中戏的段落跟外面的段落会有不一样，所以变成。我们在所有的呃歌仔戏的演戏之中，都会有音乐演演唱或是音乐，而这些音乐在台湾或者是以往，都会是交由音乐创作者另外的人来处理。Okay, so um, the director uh would like to uh formulate a a、uh, um a a pattern um. That、uh, in my play,、uh, there is a play within a play,、uh, as you can tell. And then in in Taiwan,、uh, when we perform Taiwanese opera, usually the, the singing parts uh, will be uh, taken care of by the singers or musicians、uh, rather than the the players. I mean the、uh, actors. So, uh, 但是我在这里首度尝试了，就是创创造出一些音乐来。呃，可以在这个呃表演里面来来演演奏啊，当然也非常感谢我们的二胡演奏家王阳，所以呃这个事情对我来说是一个挑战，然后也是一个也是非常呃享受，觉得呃很很很棒的一个经验跟回忆。But、uh, this is the first time for me to try and uh, perform. Uh, Through singing、uh, my own part、uh, of the play, so and I would like to、uh, say thank you,、uh, Wang Yang, for your Erhu performance. And then、uh, this is a really a challenge, and I I I think、uh, I really enjoy. Thank you.、Uh, for me, the most challenge is speaking English. <laughs> 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 uh, even the script is ha, ha, has been、uh, translated. The words is translate、uh, perfectly, but but the meaning of the words like、uh, what's love, what's normal, the context in the different language still different. <laughs> so so、uh, I have, but but it, I think it is a good challenge because、uh, I have to more focus on what what I thought, so I can、uh, express the 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 true meaning I want to tell and and found and. And found out what's the what's the mean the true meaning of this play. So it's and and the and the whole team is very、uh, inspired, <laughs> inspired me, Be because、uh, I write、uh, this this play. I have no picture in my in my brain to、uh, what the character look like and what they sound. But、uh, after the reading, oh, I. I can see the picture. I know the character. The character. Uh, uh, what they say. Uh, what? Hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, what's their voice? <laughs> yeah. So I think it's very inspired. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to open it up to a Q and A from the audience. So if you have、um, a question, you can go ahead and raise your hand. Hi. Yes. Uh, actually, please. please. I can talk very loudly. No, no, no. It's recorded <laughs> and, live, <laughs> and live stream. Hi.、Uh, actually, this is a comment for Jianguo.、Uh, I think、uh, 
your place so wonderfully done uh, with the intricate layers of stuff. And also the music is wonderful, so please don't simplify. <laughs> <laughs> It's Thank so beautifully you. done, and I really want to comment on uh, your ability to create the uh, Chinese opera. It's, it's so beautiful because the, the music uh, connects us in the subconscious level, mm -hmm. so it became very touching. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're live streaming, everyone. <laughs> You'd have to scream into the internet. Hello, HowlRound viewers. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to say thank you for your wonderful work. And the actors are around somewhere. But thank you all for really, it was wonderful to hear these plays. Um, I'm wondering if we could actually talk a little bit about the subject matter. I'm wondering if we could talk about marriage equality and where these three plays sit in, quote unquote, the history of Taiwanese theater, contemporary theater. Um, something I read led me to think that these were perhaps some of the early queer plays in Taiwan, but maybe that's just, they've been written since May. I, I, don't, I, I just wonder if you could talk a little bit about where these three plays live contextually within contemporary theater in um, Taiwan, Taipei. Uh, I don't really know that much about the, the, the queer theater in Taiwan <laughs> because um, it's not like super popular, but you see lots of gay characters in all different kind of play. And for me, uh, this play, um, we write for this event. So it's literally what I felt about after the, the gay marriage passed. So, and specific for New York audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanna like make you guys laugh and make you guys <laughs> feel, feel what I feel. <laughs> we were chatting a little bit earlier um, about how you classed your play actually as a comedy. Could you talk a little bit about what you were doing with the form? Because I would class the first 95% as a comedy. But um, you, you were kind of talking a little bit about what you were doing uh, with your ending. Um, the reason I decided to write a comedy is because uh, in these two years after we decided that uh, Taiwan is going to have gay marriage after, like, until it, it passed. In these two years, all the like religious group, you know, they keep like buying advertise like everywhere, spread this kind of uh, hate speech. So basically, the whole LGBTQ community we feel like bullied again. You know, since we were like child, we were bullied, and right now. Or every this kind of trauma like recall again and like everywhere, and uh, in these two years I, I felt like like very suffering, and but there's lots of support, especially from my straight friends because it's not really their business you know they don't really need to stand for m for me or for my community, but I, I really felt a lot of support from them so. After I know I'm going to do this project, I think, okay, I'm going to write a comedy, you know, because it's a happy moment, of course. So this is how it is. But also, it's not only the joy, you know, there's a stratum behind that. So that's why I think, okay, I'm going to write a comedy and lose everyone, you know, like, let you relax, you feel the same I felt. And I uh, want to let you guys know like, the difference between maybe American and Taiwanese is about this kind of joy, this kind of happiness, this kind of daily life. It might be disappear like one second because another country or any, I don't know. So this is why I think, okay, 
it's a comedy, but it needs to have a mm, why concern in the end. <笑>呃先回答呃刚刚呃这位女士的问题呃我想我就就比较是在台湾的戏曲这一方面呃其实呃在近年有一些呃台湾的呃传统戏曲也触及到呃同志呃的这样子的一个题材那我觉得是非常
far and, and much, much uh, like my father. I, I think my father is tradition, <laughs> traditional. But one day I'm uh, being a marriage man, <laughs> I, I being more traditional <laughs> like, like my father. So I think uh, even the law can change, the I change, but the, the, the uh, people, the thoughts change not so fast. So I, I want to write a play about the deal, the uh, Taiwanese family uh, tradi tradi <laughs> traditional uh, problems, the, the son and the, uh, the, the father and son is a, a special strong bonding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is what I think. <laughs> Thank you. So it sounds like the three of you wrote these, uh, that, well, the, the three plays are written specifically for this, and I assume you, the three of you wrote them independently. Um, but it's interesting that all three of your plays um, deal with uh, intergenerational subject, which is not, I guess it's not as uh, obvious as when we talk about uh, marriage equality. So um, I don't know, um, what, can you talk why do you, do you, just, do you put that in there? And is that a, is a, is that this thing something you always uh, you're always interested in, or is that something about this game, uh, the the marriage equality triggers this particular subject? 